Okay, we're in the studio and we've got Brother L from The Beat Bank and he's here to tell us about something big going on this weekend, which I think uh, you might appreciate. Well, apparently, if you're watching this, you, uh, you kind of know who he is. Brother L, what's happening, man? Peace, peace. I'm happy to be here, man. What's happening? You know, I like your little setup, the studio setup right there. Why you gotta say it's little? Little, I know. <laughs> that didn't come out right. <laughs> Is that where all the magic happens? Is that where you make all the music? Uh, well, it's one place I make all the music. Uh, I make music in different uh, capacities, you know. I don't always work with equipment right away. It's mostly conceptual, and then I translate it to the gear. Well, do you, like, write it out, like, on scores? Uh, what, is that, what does that mean? Oh, okay. What's that process like? It could be as simple as just, you know, a remembering an idea and then coming back to that, or it could be as elaborate as writing musical notation, or what I like, even better than that is to, to write pictorial ideas of how I want the frequency to go over time. Um, some people call that graphic scoring instead of like uh, notation scoring. It's based on like images that represent sound and the placement and how it develops over time. Like a storyboard for film. Absolutely a storyboard for me, mm. for sure. Do you find that your best work comes collaboratively or with uh, just by yourself? I mean, you know, some people, they just magically think of stuff by themselves and it comes out great. And some people have to have that interaction with someone else. I think I, I thrive within collaborativity. Uh, I don't know how to say that word. Collaboration. I thrive within collaboration. But, um, I don't, I'm not often afforded the opportunity to work with people. You know, working on electronic music, right? It's this solo kind of uh, solitary thing. And I've been trying to break that for years, you know, but uh, um, so I've come out and I've collaborated with quite a few people over the years. Uh, I enjoy it much more than working with myself. And then, you know, um, it can be challenging too, but uh, I think interesting. In what way? Well, you're sharing an NG. It's not always your idea. It, it could be an idea that maybe someone else generated. And then let's just say you two people chose to work together to produce a concept around an idea. Um, so sometimes it's the power shifts going on. Sometimes it's how, like, you know, you distribute work. You know, sometimes it's, well, whose intellectual capital is this really? You know, um, are we collaborating? Um, I tend to think that I'm able to nourish uh, collaborative environments that are uh, mm, that are good for both parties. Uh, but that's a challenge within itself. And I think that I've learned that over the years. You know, sometimes you just got to be malleable. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, pull back, push forward, right. basically to get the job done. Uh, and that's really what it is. You know, if we're together to make some sound, let's get there. And I think that we'll both be happy. So your music is definitely unique. Uh, you don't, you just don't hear a lot of music like yours. Um, Describe this music. Describe, how would you describe your music to others? Somebody who's never heard your music before, how would you describe it? Like a peacock taking its tail feather and shaking it on your face. You know, what it fluffles your nose. <laughs> you know, you might get a little funk whip, you know what I mean? Because it is the tail. You know what I mean? But that's the essence of it right there, putting it all together, making it, you know, do what it do, naturally. Um, but really, my music is fun. It's interesting. It's healing. It's stimulating. It's not so serious, and it can be serious. It's um, representative of nature and uh, bodily functions, different systems. Um, and it's a 
the totality of my experience. You grew up in Chicago, so I'm assuming that house music had a lot to do with shaping the sound since that's the home of house music, right? Is that, is, is that kind of part of it? Because when I hear your music, I hear some house in there and it's almost like a new age house EDM kind of mix. It's, it's unique. I didn't grow up as a house fan. Um, I'm, I'm hip hop, really. Okay. So my aesthetic is coming from a hip hop aesthetic, right? So, you know, I'm the B-boy breaking, beat making, DJing, scratching. But what happened with that is that um, growing up in a house city, I kind of rebelled against house music. Uh, in many ways. And I often thought about house music was like my father's music, quote unquote. Not in actuality, but like something that's like the mainstream, you know, that people are into. And, you know, I didn't give it much value early on, but I learned to love it because it was all around me. And, you know, when I really gave it a chance, I saw the intricacy and I saw how like, you know, the relationships and the, the geography and the people of Chicago made this beautiful thing. And, you know, when I start to do my history and really learn, you know, who did what and how it was done. I mean, it's an amazing art form. And so I have, so I started in hip hop, but I like to say, I don't just make hip hop. I make music, but it's influenced by different things. And, you know, the amounts can vary based on where am I, you know, where am I really trying to go? What do I want people to know about me? Um, what do I want them to feel? So tell us about the event at Oakwood Beach this weekend. Sandbox Symphony is an arts activation for healing and inspiration. And what's happening is that we're galvanizing people, artists, uh, and, uh, creating scenarios for people to experience art in a different capacity than they may be used to. So what that means in reality is that we have music, electronic music on the beach. We have yoga, fitness classes on the beach. We have painting engagements. You know, we have some construction, some, you know, engineering engagements. <clears throat> and we transform the beach into a gallery with no walls, with art you can touch and feel and be a part of. All this mixed together, you know, with people again, is the Sandbox Symphony uh, on Oakwood Beach. Uh, it's a, like I say, an arts activation for healing and inspiration. And when we mix up all of those things, magic happens. Like people experience art on their own terms, they don't feel the society constructs of like, you know, white wall museums and how you're supposed to look and engage and, and how boxed far. in. They don't feel, it doesn't feel boxed in. No, it definitely not like boxed open. in. That's the first thing, you know, cause we're outside literally, you know. Uh, right. So, but not only that, you get to participate in a different way, you know. I mean, you can actually touch things, you know. You can make things on the spot. Um, all being inspired by healing sounds all around. And if you want to work your body out, we got that for you too. Oh, and then there's another component, food, of course, you know, so we want you to stay around and spend the day with us. So we got to feed you, uh, but you feed yourself with your own money, actually. So basically, um, this is going to be, the Sandbox Symphony is going to be an open art gallery, like on the art gallery on the beach with this real big open kind of feel to it. But but more than that though, right? It's not just an art gallery. I mean, there's a lot of interaction going on. Absolutely. Um, the way um, I've designed it is that people can engage with different things that on their own terms and at different times and at different amounts. And I actually call it a uh, tears of inspiration and the way that I've designed the beach where like there are layers of experience. So, you know, let's just imagine a frame. First thing you see is one. 
and then there's another layer, and then there's another layer, and then there's another layer. There are at least four layers or four tiers of inspiration everywhere you look in Sandbox Symphony. So like, it could be a bit of overstimulation, but the way we're using it is totally for people to experience art How in a different look, way. How does that look, overstimulation? Well, joy, happiness. <laughs> I don't know. I'm overstimulation, that sounds interesting. Yeah, overstimulation is, is joy. <laughs> I like joy. Everybody, who doesn't love joy? Like a very, like very, very white voice joy. Now, this is not the first time you've done this. No, this is the seventh year, you know. Special number. Seven is the prime number, right? Um, and uh, we've just been growing. And this year will be our best year, you know. Uh, you know, they say uh, the best is yet to come. And uh, I'm expecting uh, nothing but pure overstimulation from everyone, you know. Um, and another beautiful thing about this event is that it's family friendly. So you can experience this with everyone. It's not totally geared for children. It's not totally geared for adults. It's geared for people who, you know, would like to experience a different thing within their own community and find something that they may not know about and learn a little bit about. Or if they do know about these things, they can add on to the experience right on the spot. I'd imagine the kind of people that would be interested in this would be the real uh, eclectic type that is kind of, um, you know, into uh, the different vibes of the universe and like the kind of women that I love. Mm. I'm just saying. Well, I'll say, um, you know. Yeah, the ones who are spiritual, very spiritual. That's the well, you I'm know, saying. Sam, every, everybody there is not, you know, wearing crystal deodorant. You know, it's it's a lot of people out here, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, it's designed for everyone. We're trying to break those barriers down. We don't want it to be just for one type of person uh, because that wouldn't, okay. that okay. wouldn't serve us. And, um, there are things that are built in to stimulate, <laughs> there's that word again, to encourage um, people from all, you know, facets of life to be a part of it. Well, that's good. That's good. But people, I would assume they would be somewhat open-minded, at least. Oh, for sure. Well, you know, people are not easily won over, but... You know, spend a little time with Sandbox Symphony and you'll realize the magic. With your charming personality, I'm sure it's going to be packed. Man, we're expecting record numbers. But it's not about numbers. It's about quality of experience for people. And this cannot happen without people, people power. Because we're working, you know, in realms of healing. And we know collectively that this type of thing is where it's at and where we should be going, you know, and not, and, and, and divesting in, you know, some of the traditional medicines, you know, and hey, man, it's lowering the bar so that it can be accessible. That's like a main key point for Sandbox Symphony. It's really making art accessible, making healing accessible for people. Because like, why should you not be treated if you don't have insurance? See, um, I don't think I've ever heard the word "lower the bar" before, and that quite in that context. But I mean, it's a good analogy, like you know, for the masses, bring people in who might not have otherwise thought about it, and I think that's a great thing. Yeah, sometimes you got to come down to the level so you can get up, right? Got to get down so you can get up. <laughs> <laughs> Sandbox Symphony, that's this weekend, 2 p.m. Um, anything else that we forgot about? No, you know, um, not much at all. I'm just uh, thankful that uh, I was able to have this time and chat with you. And uh, let's continue this vibe, man. Sandbox Symphony number seven is up next. <laughs>